Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James and Break, and we are one. So today, I want to talk about uh, something that I've kind of held off on for a little bit, and that's the GPD Win Max 2. It, the original GPD stuff, I just haven't really cared for. It's been a little bit of a netbooky kind of thing, and I think it looks cool when I see it. I just, with when I'm getting that type of device, I'm either going to be getting a laptop that's like a 15 inch or I'm going to be getting a handheld like a switch it doesn't quite like and if I want both um combined in one device I just don't know if that would be the device for me at least the past ones this one though it's looking more promising so yeah let's 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 get my ideas on this and I think you might be surprised whether or not I like it or not and would want it um because I am a little pessimistic about this type of stuff, especially this one. So, before we get into it, make sure to like, subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar. Now, field trip mode. Let's look at this bad, bad boy. So, the GPD Win Max 2 handheld gaming PC with bezel, bezel-less display. Now, I have to read that because, uh, just in case you guys don't know how to read. But that's just a, you know, not, this is a slide out, you guys. Okay, so, if we look at this thing... It really does look like a netbook from back in the day, um, except for it's a square screen it's, and then instead of, you know, the 16 by 9. It's a, I don't know what that ratio that is, a 4, a four by 3, I believe, and uh, which is a lot like the Windows Surface uh, uh, laptops and, and uh, tablets that they have. So this, and there's a point to that. This is, I believe, more of a tablet, actually, than... It, it's it's like a hybrid of everything. The creator of this is like, okay, we literally want to put everything into this, make it 10 inches, and it can do pretty much everything, but just not amazing, in my opinion. Like, when you try to do this much, is it going to be amazing? Not sure about that. But it does look cool, and if I could get one at a decent enough price where if it was gifted to me, I I'd, I'd probably would use this a lot. Um, but we'll, we'll get into the, my final thoughts on this at the end of this let's go through some of the uh features it has it's got um intel and amd options that being said obviously i you know i think i'm going going with the 6800u and with the 680m i love this lineup that's that's been coming out with the loki max and the air um actually the air does not have that it's the geek 2 that does from ioneo uh i don't know how intel graphics work on steam os because i'd want to slap steam os on this i don't know how intel is necessarily supported i know and I, I know it's supported better than nvidia i know nvidia is kind of like the one that's not supported the most um i'm kind of curious though i'm, I'm kind of curious which of these would do better uh you can see the shader count is the same the, it's eu cus um i actually don't know what the difference would be performance wise on something like that and then you also can see that hey that has quite a bit more bandwidth on the memory, so I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like the AMD is the is the winner in this. I don't I, I unless there's like maybe for applications or some other purpose. I don't know why there's op two options on devices like this. I don't know why they don't just choose the one that's best and optimize around that. I feel like it'd be better to do that, like kind of what the Steam Deck did. Now. The number one feature that I like about this, it has dual M.2 slots. It's got dual M.2 slots, a 2280 slot and a 2230 slot. I love this. So I can essentially have, you know, a one terabyte 2230 in there and then, you know, a three, four terabyte 2280 and have six or, you know, well, I'll have, I'd have six gigs of RAM when the 2230 two terabyte is more readily available, but you could up to have up to about six gigabytes of storage in this thing. That's pretty sick. That's when I start to care about the M.2 slot. Um, with the Steam Deck, with it having a limit right now because they're just the two terabytes aren't really readily available for 2230, the one terabyte just isn't enough for me to really want to go and spend the money on a, two, on a two, uh, one terabyte. But once we get past the one terabyte, get into that field, then it starts to become a little bit more um, awesome for me. Um, that being said, I'm always going to never have enough space for this because games are so big. SD cards are awesome. With that, it does have a micro SD card slot. And I love it. I love it so much. And it's 
they say it's a great value for photographers and players. So I don't know who's playing this deck, but they, uh, they're they getting some D with that SD card slot. So with, <laughs> with also that, uh, it's got the standard Wi-Fi 6. I think all devices are coming out with that. Four speakers, uh, surround sound. I don't... We'll see if it beats the Steam Decks. The Steam Decks obviously are pretty small, but uh, we'll see if two small speakers beats uh, four or, you know, or vice versa. Got the Bluetooth 5.2. Pretty standard. A lot of the stuff's pretty standard, it feels like. Um, and then, but, I mean, once again, this has a built-in keyboard on it. I love that. And this type of device would be really fun to take on the go and program on. Um, I do like 15 inches for programming, though, and my MacBook does great. So I don't know if it could replace it, but uh, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting option. Then this is the, probably the most interesting one that I'd, I want to see more devices come out with this, um, and it has a 4G LTE module. This, besides the dual slots, is really exciting to me. Every time I look at a device that has something like this, like the Surface and some of my, the other tablets that I've looked at and bought, I have wanted this in my devices until I realized, and, and one of my devices had this, I didn't use it often. What I end up doing is just using my hotspot on my phone just because it's easy. I, it's just the way it is on these types of dev I things. I, it's just maybe it's a laziness factor for me or whatnot. But, but I will say for this device, for this device, I might actually use it because just the portability of it and the way it's, it's set up. High efficiency uh, cooling, I, I feel like, if it, it wouldn't be a marketing page without that, right? Oh, and look at this. You can use it as a, as a laptop, essentially, or, you know, your docked mode laptop computer. Um, you can, I mean, I, I'm only comparing this to the Steam Deck because it's, it, it, you know, you can do this with the Steam Deck. Also, I have my portable keyboard here. It's actually the way I've been working more and more with it, and I like it. That being said... What this thing does have that the Steam Deck does not have is it has ports for days. It is ported out. It has an HDMI 2.0, 2.1 slot USB. It's got uh, Thunderbolt 4, which would be for the Intel, and USB 4 for the AMD. Big note on that, guys. Um, Thunderbolt 4 does support eGPUs. USB 4 should support eGPUs. I'm curious, driver-wise and all that, how that would work. Um, it's got 100-watt um, fast charge, which is awesome. Uh, heads, headset and microphone slots. This is it's, it's, it's porting for days, guys. It's got everything. It's got... Um, a micro SD and a regular SD slot, a reset button, which is interesting. Um, usually, you can they can just program that program that into the button itself, like the power button, and just have a hold down. Uh, and then, you know, loudspeakers. Well, we'll see how loud they are. More USB slots, more, a fingerprint uh, sensor for security, which is awesome. I do like that. Um, I do like the face recognition. I wonder if it does have the face, the uh, Windows face technology, because there's a camera right there in the hinge of the lid with all this the resolution is another interesting part 1920 by 1200 and 2560 by 1600 that's high resolution that's going to eat through that battery which is a 67 watt battery milliamp watt battery that is and i don't it is bigger than the steam decks but i don't think it's going to last as long as the Steam Deck, with with the power that's being pumped into this thing, the ports, the just everything that's in it. Once you start plugging things in, more and more power draw will come from that battery. Not saying that that's necessarily what's going to happen with what people are going to do, but that higher resolution, the the screen size, the brightness, all that is going to add some power drain to it. So I'm kind of curious to really see how well this does. This is another thing. The touch screen, it supports a pen, so you can use this like a tablet. Like I said, it's a multi-purpose device. You can use this for multiple different things, which is cool on paper, and I usually end up getting suckered into this type of thing until, like, with my Surface Books, I love them until I don't use them, really, um, because I, I just, oh, okay, I will have to say, I bought it, my Surface, specifically for the pen, and I do use it with the pen at times, Um so maybe this could be nice. It's just a little, it's just a little bit small. I, I like, well, I have a 12-inch surface, and I like that. So I'm wondering how the 10-inch would work with it. 
Um, this feels like almost like Windows should have made this, like Microsoft, that is. Microsoft should have made a device like this or bought GPD and supported this because it feels like it'd be a lineup for theirs. The Surface Gamer Pro or something like that. So the eight cores is pretty cool. And to be honest, I don't even know if the Steam Deck 2 is going to end up with eight cores at this rate. We saw how many cores the the APU that's under development is going to be about four. I have a, I have a feeling it's going to be a six core, um, maybe even eight, but that's going to be more power draw. Um, also having it max dr- uh, turbo up to this more power draw and it will just be interesting what the power draw on this and the 6800, the graphics that I've seen, um, on this page, haven't been very impressive to me. I've actually seen better from the 6800 from another device. So I don't think these numbers are, I'm not, I'm going to give these, uh, numbers that they're going to be better. I think these are going to be better in the future. Um, and it looks like FSR, like God of War. 1920 by 1200, that's a pretty good resolution to run God of War at a low 45. Um, and then Elden Ring, 1920 by 1200, medium 34. Seems good at that resolution. But let's just bump that resolution down a little bit. And, uh, well, with FSR on the God of War, um, you think you'd even get better than that at a low? Um, I just feel like the Steam Deck does about some of these numbers. and But then again, it is running SteamOS. So I'm curious, with this was running SteamOS, what it would get numbers wise as opposed to the steam deck um I, i'm all inclined to believe that the 6800 is going to be about 50 percent more powerful than the steam deck with one slight exception this could be running at a lower tbd than on the steam or than the other options that i've seen with the 6800 because those are like 28 watts which is i don't think it's going to be realistic for a portable device unless you have it plugged in now if you want to say hey that's going to be docked mode. Awesome. Go for it. I love having the idea of having a docked mode, but I want to see performance wise with the same wattage, with the same battery life, what these devices can do against a steam deck and just see what comes out. That's really what I'm kind of waiting for. And that's why I'm very, uh, not sure about all these devices coming. I feel like it's, it, it, it's going to be an interesting battle. I'm I'm definitely not thinking that steam deck is going to be the number one for performance and maybe experience when SteamOS comes out for these other devices in the next year. I do think that Steam Deck will necessarily, well, like from a performance and just uh, feature uh, way wise uh, be replaced in the next year as king. Uh, Community wise though, I think Steam Deck is going to be the king for a good long while. I just, there's so many uh, reservations. There's so many people that love it and it's got the brand name and it does a good job. They really did create a rounded device. So I do think the Steam Deck is going to be the brand name for a while, but I think um, the brand name is not always the best. There's always there's a third part. There's third or there's other options that are better. Um, so yeah, it's got the triggers. It's got everything about it. Um, it doesn't look comfortable to me. I'll be honest. I don't think I'd want to play on this. I said that kind of a little bit about the Steam Deck when it first came out. When I reserved it, I'm like, well, I'm going to reserve it anyways because I'm a Valve fanboy. I guess. And uh, I just didn't necessarily believe I was like how comfortable they were, but I didn't care. It was going to replace my, my switch, which I've been wanting to do with my steam library. Then when it came out and people were talking about it, I'm like, yeah, I could actually see it being very comfortable. And then I had it in my hands and it is really comfortable. This does not look comfortable to me. Not for long sessions, not for something like this uh, for short sessions, like maybe half hour, hour. I could, I could get away with it. Um, once again, I'd have to see if this would replace my, uh, would replace my steam deck. And I only say replace because I, you know, I'm only going to main something. I'm one thing. I'm not going to be having like three devices and playing them back and forth. Um, I'll have a typical one that I'll reach for. Even if I might play with my laptop every once in a while, I still reach for the steam deck a lot more. Now, my final say on this whole thing, uh, is that, you can't reserve one yet on Indiegogo. Uh, their button, their order now goes to uh, draft mode on Indiegogo, which is kind of funny. But um, ultimately, this thing is going to cost eight hundred ninety nine dollars, and that's for the cheapest limited, like it's like a limited edition or something like that. Maybe it's like the early bird special on Indiegogo when it first launches. That's what it's going to cost eight hundred ninety nine dollars. Um, in comparison to the uh, other options, which are going to be a couple hundred dollars less for a similar spec system, 
And when I say similar spec, I mean the APU. Obviously, this thing has all the bells and whistles. And really, if you're looking to like really max out what you want out of your portable gaming device, uh, this might be the, the thing for you. It's just it really edges the line of, is this portable <laughs> compared to even the Steam Deck? The Steam Deck is pretty big, but I can fit it pretty easily in my bag, and it's not a laptop. Um, just, yeah, that is just the way it is. So... My final thoughts on this whole thing is I like this device. I'm not going to reserve it. I'm going to reserve the Maxi, uh, the, uh, the Loki Max, the Maxi Loki. Um, and I'm also um, going to be reserving one of the Airs or uh, the Geek, whatever, whichever one. We'll, we'll see. This is one that if they want to give me one to review, I'll review it. And I'll review it honestly. Like, I would like this device. I just don't think I would main this device. Um, right now, I like my Steam Deck, and then I also like my MacBook for doing what I need to do on the go. Um, and on the go means on the couch up above me, like on the you know the first and second floor of my house. I don't necessarily need a device like this, but I would like to be proven wrong. So with that being said, in the end, I like this device. I like what it stands for. I like this actually a lot more than the options that they've given us in the past. So I put my stamp of approval. If you want an all in one device, that's like a netbook. Um, just keep in mind that that four by three ratio screen is going to have a lot of black bars in it. When you're watching certain movies and playing certain games that don't support that ratio. Um, it's just having the wide screens is just a little bit better in my opinion, unless you're doing other type of content creation. Now, with that being said, I want to know what you think. I gave you what I thought. I want to know what you think. Do you like this device? Are you going to get this over the Steam Deck? Or are you kind of contemplating it? Um, what do you guys think? What is the best option in the next future? Is it this part of that list? Thank you guys for watching. Check out my other videos. And check out the description with all the goodies below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Later.